Hello everybody, this is Etho, and welcome back to some more Terraforma Punk. So the vote is in, everybody, it is in. I asked you last episode, should we should we focus on unlocking automation this episode, or should we focus on like building up our base, working on our infrastructure, and uh, I think automation won. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do here. Uh, our goal is to kind of unlock this chain. I think we have to do the belt time quest line. So that involves making some gears and stuff. Nothing too exciting. But I think we use these later, these gears and springs and stuff for making some of the machines for automating stuff. So it's kind of important. But we need a brass gear, we need an iron gear, we need a gold gear, and we haven't really gotten any gold yet. So I have journeyed out. This is about 500 blocks away from our base. But first we have to figure out where it is exactly. So there's the gold, the gold on the surface here, the nuggets. Mmm, nuggets. Ah, uh, nothing of interest. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Uh-oh, it might be uh, deep down then. Like a, like a deep dish pizza. It's like, man, I should have, I should have ate. Everything's reminding me of food now. Okay, we're going down. Small sample of native gold. Traces of native gold. We're getting closer. I, I'm hearing a spider. Okay, we've got the layer shifts. Oh! What are you? You're a white spider. <laughs> That's never happened. Like, I always dig straight down in terra firma. Terra, terra firma craft, and it's like, you never fall into a cave. It's pretty rare. Thankfully, it wasn't very deep. Oh, here we go. We found it. It's just, this is perfect. Okay, let's light up the area a little bit so we don't uh, get surprised. Uh, let's check it out. 25 unit. Okay, we'll take that. That's not bad. Cool, cool. I did bring our super picks. I finally remembered. Let's see if we can kill, kill ourselves with a cave in here. Oh! <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's not do that again. It took a bit of health. I thought I could back up quick enough, but that didn't work. Yeah, okay. I'm going to mostly use this pick. As long as I don't mind the stone, we don't have to worry about a cave in. Uh... Uh, just mind the ore. We're we're safe. All right, excellent. So check this out. All this empty space we're walking in right now used to be solid gold. We mined it out. That's a pretty good sized vein. We got a we got a big chunk of it it's now in our pockets. Now we're gonna head back to our base and start smelting it down. If I can find my way out of here, <laughs> there's a bit of a uh, bit of mining. Uh oh. Another white spider. Oh, oh, got him. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh, and by the way, I've seen a few of you in the comments mention a trick, and I finally tried it out today. So usually, when I go mining, I'll bring like a barrel with me and a few of these vessels, and I'll fill up my inventory and run out of space, right? But apparently, you can load up these vessels. And then load up the barrel <laughs> with the vessels. So that's like 12 times 4, 48 uh, stacks you can s store in one of these. Plus your, your other inventory as well. So I think we're going to make the purple barrel here, our special one, the Kapok barrel. And we'll load that up with empty vessels. So when we go mining, we'll just take that with us from now on. But yeah, check this out. We got all this gold. That's about 116 ingots worth. So yeah, this is where our triple forge comes in real handy. We can get all three of these running at the same time. And we're going to start casting and smelting this stuff down into ingot form. So it'll take up less space and we'll stack it in our, our thing here. Awesome, so we got that done, all 116 ingots worth. This is the best part. This is like one of my favorite things about Terraforma Craft. You can stack the ingots. <laughs> that just looks so good. It's so satisfying when you can see all your work, you know? All the time you spent smelting. Okay, so we got a pretty good chunk of gold there. It's our second most abundant uh, ingot now. And I did uh, those gear quests as well, so let's go ahead and hand these in. I'm gonna take the iron rivet. Just got a hunch. I don't know. Iron plate. I think we're going to need it for crafting something. Zinc, iron, or gold fragment. 
I have no idea. Okay. Cool, so next up here we gotta do some gold rivets. Draw, hit, hit. There we go. Oh, it gives you four too. Did this melt on us? Oh, not yet. We got it just in time. Okay. Wait, no, we don't weld these ones. We just make the springs like that. Okay, I see how it is, game. I see how it is. It's my third attempt now. <laughs> I'm struggling so much on this one. Why is it so hard? Hit, draw, bend. Hit, draw, bend. Hit. I'm gonna have a nightmare of this. <laughs> I just can't get it. Try once more, and then... Oh, man, it's like... Yeah, it's lining up at the top here. I'm doing it right. Let's start with this lined up perfectly. Maybe that's my problem. Hit. Go once again. Draw. Bend. There we go. We did it. Oh my goodness. That one was... That was a nasty one. All right, we got our rivets here. It's going to give us a blaze rod. We will take the gold. Oh, and now new stuff is unlocking. I think we'll take the bag on this one. Bags are more fun. Okay, now we get our tin. Take two double tin ingots, and we gotta make some metal chain. Draw, hit, hit. There we go, we did it. We know the trick, we know the trick now. Line them up, bend, bend, hit, hit, draw, bend. Whew. Okay, we got two propellers. We gotta do three more wire. Well, we're making some slow progress here, but we are advancing through the quest book at least. Um, just making more parts and more parts. I'm going to make a bunch of these crankshafts so we never have to make them again. And sticks are plenty abundant for us. Oh, they don't stack. No. Oh, I regret everything. Crank and the gears. We got four gears, so we may as well make two of these because I think we need them for some other stuff. All right, we got our mechanical boards. Two more quests done here, I believe. Take some brass springs. We will hand in the propeller quest. Take some gold again. Now we're getting to some more interesting stuff here. So there's like a fan. I'm pretty sure we got all the stuff for that too now. Um, thankfully, we, we gathered some iron bars when we went to the roguelike dungeon before. So we have those made and Brass plates is the fan. Excellent. Okay, so that's our first like actual mechanical device, I believe. We'll take the iron rivet. I'm guessing we need to hook this up to steam power though. I don't think it does anything on its own. Oh, actually, I'm not sure now. I saw the steam container and pressure tank and I just assumed it was a steam powered mod, but it wants us to make this. Wind me up. Wind up trinket. The heart and soul of any clockwork automation is the wind-up gearbox, so it's like spring power. Springs, gold rivets, gears, and slime balls are all you need to make this compact gear and metal device. So we've made these slime these slime balls before. It's this cooked slime. Um, and this is all the other materials we were, were making today, so that's great. Should have everything here. I just don't know if I remember it. Oh, we got it. Okay. So it says zero out of a thousand... Wind-up energy, I'm assuming WE stands for. I'm not too sure. Okay, we will take... Oh, I really want the advanced rails. I'm gonna take them. <laughs> uh, can't pass those up. So, how does this thing work? We gotta right-click it or something? Oh yeah, that's adding energy, so it's at 24. Oh, that's brutal. Is that really how it works? 132. Like, could we hook it up to this somehow? All right, so some of you might be wondering, Etho, like, come on, what's the point of all this? You're just endlessly crafting. And and to be honest, I was starting to wonder that myself. <laughs> Felt like we were going nowhere. Uh, but now I'm starting to see. I'm starting to get it, guys. So if we look in the book, it unlocked the Wind and Go. This is your very first source of power for more advanced automated machines. So when we need RF power... This is what we want. And it's not terrible. Like normally we can't make this brass piston, but we have three of those right now in our storage, I think. Uh that we got through reward bags and stuff. So we can kinda we can kinda sneak one of those in if we need it. Uh, but we're gonna do this one, and this isn't all that interesting either. 
Um, but it is. It's really, really cool. Just wait and see. All right, we take our wooden cranks. We take our bronze two years. These are double bronze sheets worked on the anvil. They're kind of tedious to make, kind of difficult. And then we get an advanced handle. Oh my goodness, right? That sounds so boring, but it's, it's good, guys. Oh, it's using up the durability, not the actual item. Okay, that's interesting. So that's another quest done. But are you ready for this, guys? We did actually unlock enter the automation. That's what we wanted. And look at this. <laughs> the very first quest, we get luggage. So we need three of those. We need the wind-up trinkets, some treated sticks, all the stuff we've we've kind of gotten together now. It's finally paying off in one of the most amazing recipes ever. All right, let's do it. Treated sticks, the trinkets, fully powered up. We get the luggage. Oh, and it doesn't use up the wind-up trinket. Oh, that's great. Because that thing was kind of expensive. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, wait. He's, is he not following me? Oh, yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> Get him, luggage. Oh, that's great. So, you can name this guy somehow, can't you? Or do you need a name tag? Oh, you can pick him up. Okay, that's cool. So, he's basically a chest that will follow you around. He's actually really neat. <laughs> and I wanted to check out, let's see here, can we put like, oh, I didn't want to click empty, I wanted to seal it. Um, Here, we got a little bit of brine in here. We'll seal this. I want to see if we can carry barrels, because this might be our answer to like, how do we get salt water from the ocean? Because otherwise we have to carry it one by one. I think this guy will carry it for us, we can cheese it. Yeah, yeah, so he'll carry liquid in barrels for us. All right, I think I'm gonna go for the acacia chest. Nice red color. And look at this, so it's gonna want us to make, I think that's computer craft, like the, the terminal, right? That's, that's a long ways away though. Oh no, yeah, we can't do that for a long time. <laughs> There's some stuff in there, a thermal fabricator and uh, yeah. Okay, so we unlocked this quest chain, but we've hit a, a dead end instantly. Uh, let's see what we got for the bag. We got a greater bag, some lumber. We still have this one to open. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. He picks up stuff too, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, that's great. He's got like a crunching sound. I love this guy. Oh man, okay, so I was a little bummed out here. I tried to craft a name tag and there's no recipe for it. I was like, aw, we can't, we can't name our luggage. But it looks like we can put them in an anvil and do it this way. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna, we're gonna roll with the Chester, I think. Good name. We got our Chester. So there's some other stuff you can do with them too. There's a way to upgrade them. And apparently he makes a different sound if you feed him rotten flesh. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> that's great. Um, so there's three ways to upgrade them. You can either have them get blown up by a charge creeper. You can have them struck by lightning. Or you can dose them with some witch water. Oh, it's not done yet. Get back in the pen. Okay. Is this done yet? Oh, it just finished. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Alright, our witch water's done. So let's try, see, I don't know if we're going to be able to pick it up and place it is the problem. But this would be by far the easiest way of doing it if we can. So this is like our best bucket, the ceramic one. Does that pick it up? It doesn't look like it. We got on output now. Still doesn't matter. Yeah, it might not be possible then. I'll try put them inside. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that would work. Hmm, yeah, so if we can upgrade him, he'll get double the space. He'll turn into like a double chest, which would be amazing. But the only thing that'll pick up witch water is an iron bucket, and that is not craftable in this pack. So we need like a machine that will place water in the world. I can't think of anything right now that would, that would do that. So it'll be a while before we can uh, upgrade our, our chester friend here. 
Okay, well anyways, I did figure out a little bit more about this Cogs of the Machine mod. It's it's a little strange, it's a little janky, but uh, those gears we were using, they're not just for crafting things, you can actually place them in the world. And like hook them together and hook them up to the machines and stuff, which is pretty interesting. And then like at the very lowest level in this mod, you use one of these wooden cranks. I think that's what the durability is about. And yeah, you can spin the gears manually and you see the fan pushed us. But it also has a suction effect if we rotate the other gear so it turns the other way. Here, Chester, you demonstrate for us. Stand in front. This guy's going to be so useful. <laughs> it's, it's got like a suction effect if it spins the other way. So that's pretty neat. So another way of getting power in this mod, though, is this pendulum, apparently. It's not just for looks. This, this rotating symbol on it, that's where the gear goes, and it'll turn to the left, right? And then you just got to crank the pendulum, and it'll start spinning. And I think it runs for a long time or forever. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this, this fan, oh, we can, we can change which direction it goes to. Huh. Oh, Chester, <laughs> he's right on top of things. Not sure how to rotate things properly. It's kind of bugging me. Okay, let's, let's replace it. Put the gear back on. And yeah, it'll, it'll like push forever. So that's pretty useful if we want to make like a mob system or something. If we can get a bunch of these, it's not a bad, not a bad thing. The range on that's actually pretty incredible. So I think that's as far as we're going to go into this mod today. Uh, mostly because I don't want to craft any more of these parts. It takes a lot of metalworking. Um, but what we're going to do instead, we're going to get into a mod I've been sort of avoiding up to this point. Mostly because I just wanted to play Terraform a craft like the normal way. And this would have changed things, maybe. But we're going to get into Ex Nilio now. We do have it in this pack. And as you know, you can get ores and stuff through this. But more importantly... Oh, you're over here. <laughs> it's like, where is he? They usually hide on the other side of this wall and then jump over. Um, yeah, we can make the... The sieves, the sieves, the sieves uh, in this. And then we can take our gravel and stuff. Sand, gravel. Oh, I don't have much gravel. We're going to have to get more of this probably. So if we check this out. um, Yeah, look at this. You get all kinds of random crazy stuff, not just ores. Um, and a lot of the ores you get aren't super useful they're like the the weird random stuff like jet uh but some of it's like iron and that so that that can be useful but yeah look we can get the cog wheels we can get this metal chain would have been nice to have feathers crude circuits you know some of the stuff's a little tricky to make and we can just get it by sifting and save ourselves a lot of metal working so let's let's try a little bit here now as far as i can tell there's no way to get an automatic Sifter, though. Um, and as far as I can tell, I can't find any way to automatically right-click in this mod pack. So if I want to use this, I have to do it myself. And rely on Chester here <laughs> to clean up. Um, we're actually getting a lot of stuff from this, though, aren't we? So I think we sifted 17 gravel and we got all this stuff here, which isn't bad. Some platinum, iron, saltpeter... Kaolinite. So if you can't find graphite or kaolinite in your world, this is another way of getting it too, by the way. Uh, we didn't have that trouble though, thankfully. But like with nickel, we're probably going to have trouble finding nickel and we might be able to get it through uh, the gravel. It does matter what type of gravel you use. Like there's like 20 different types, right? So depending on which type you use affects what drops you get. Um... Like this one has bismuth and another one didn't that we looked at. So one of these probably has nickel in if I need it. This one has graphite as an option. Cinnabar. So unfortunately though, we are all out of gravel. And if we want to get more, like we could make a hammer. It does look like that's possible. We could smash down some cobblestone into gravel. 
but that doesn't sound very efficient to me. I would rather just go mine it in the world and maybe get like a good level 30 enchantment on a shovel, get efficiency. Maybe we'll be able to instant mine it then. That would be cool. Um, but we need levels. We need levels. So that's my next idea I want to check out here. So if I remember right, we made a slime arrow before. And I think it spawns slimes. Am I not? Am I remembering that right? <laughs> uh, which would be amazing because we could spawn an experience that way. Yeah. Because you kill them and you get more slime balls. The only thing we're missing then is feathers. And we did get experience from that. So that's, that's interesting. I wonder if it makes a bigger guy the harder you shoot. Oh, he's got a... He's got a hammer in his head. <laughs> or an axe, okay. Grab some cobblestone. This is going to be so cheaty if this works. Like, so, so cheaty. It'll be amazing. <laughs> Alright, dispenser. With slime arrow in. I got some... something to activate it? Yeah, okay. Let's see if it'll spawn him. Oh my goodness, that's so broken. We got two jumbos, too. <laughs> Wait, this guy's glitched out, isn't he? Wait a second. Uh-oh. Oh, and they drop items? Like, other random stuff? What's up with this guy? Why is he here? Uh-oh. Whoo, okay, I relogged here and he seems to be gone, so that's good. I think the arrow bounced off of Chester. So, let's pick up Chester for a second. We're, we're doing some private testing here. No, no visitors. Okay, let's try it again with no Chester. Okay, that time I didn't glitch out. That's very good. So if we could get like a chicken farm going, I think that's going to be our plan next episode. Get a chicken farm going and then set up a slime mob farm for experience. Like we do have that gas farm, but it's really slow. That's like if we really need gunpowder, that's how we can do it. Oh, ender chest hat. I like that one. Oh, that's a rainbow slime. Hmm. Wonder if that'll be an issue. Uh huh. But yeah, each each feather will spawn in four slimes, which is a decent amount of experience. And then we can have multiple dispensers going, spawning multiple guys, right? So I think this could be pretty cool. Uh huh. So that's the plan for next episode. Uh, we're going to wrap up this one, though, for today. I just want to check out one more thing here before we do. The shears. You guys keep telling me to make shears. That they don't take durability damage. And you can get saplings still. Um, so, yeah, they're not taking durability damage. Okay, these guys still spawn in. And apparently you get, like, lots of saplings, is what you guys are saying. Like, more than with the sickle. Yeah, probably, probably. Not getting like a ton or anything, but it's not bad. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, now we're getting more. Now we're getting more. Eight. Yeah, okay, that's that's definitely better, I think. That's cool. That's gonna be maybe our our replacement for the sickle, because those keep breaking on me. They're kind of annoying to keep crafting. Um so I like the shears. I think that's gonna be good. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for watching, as always, and I'll see you again in the next one. Take care, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.